Welcome back to today's video. Today we're talking all about how to create a simple yearly planning template using Tana. So my name's Ev and I create YouTube videos about how to elevate your life and work using tools for thought. And in today's video, I thought it's that time of the year where everyone is talking about planning their year, reviewing their year. And I thought it'd be a great time to show you how I do that uh, in Tana now. Um, and before that, uh, I used to use the same template. I've used the same template for about five or six years um, just to create a really simple yearly plan. So when it comes to planning for me and planning for my year, there's three things that kind of guide me in the way that I create that kind of template and I create that yearly plan. So the first one is simplicity. So I know that uh, if I try and create something really complex, I'm probably not going to do it. Uh, I really envy people who have those like really deep like yearly reviews and yearly plans. That's just not me. Uh, I need something that I can quickly do and I can kind of like keep in the back of my mind for a couple of weeks and then lock it in. So that's kind of number one, simplicity. Number two, I want something that I can hold loosely. So um, I want something with a little bit of flex, nothing too kind of like rigid. Um, otherwise, I know I'm not going to stick to it. And I feel like uh, if it's too too strict then I can't take hold of opportunities that come up and so I try to hold it very loosely and kind of have a loose kind of uh, boundaries in which to plan my year and then number three I really go into it with intention so I don't want something that's just kind of like uh, a, a bunch of words on a page or some goals that I kind of thought I have to do that. I want something that I can feel that I want. I want something that I can live every day and that I'm really proud of to when I get to the end of the year. That I'm like, oh, yeah, I really, really uh, lived every day with intention. So those are the three things that kind of infuse how I do my yearly planning. So let's get into actually the template that I use and some of the prompts that I use to start to plan my year. So first things first, I start with three simple activities that help me kind of review last year, uh, go into this year with a little bit of a, an idea of what I want to do. And then that then forms the basis for some things that I choose in the next part of the plan. So the first activity that I do is a more and less list. Really, really simple. I basically write down in two lists what I want more of, and what I want less of. Um, and uh, it actually is a really, really great exercise just to get you thinking about the past year and to say, okay, you know, what is it that maybe I didn't have as much of in my life that I want more of? And what is there that I want more or that I want less of that I did too much kind of in, in the year? So it helps to bring some balance and it helps to bring some perspective. Once I've done that, then I do a visualization activity, which I learned from a very dear friend of mine a few years ago, which is called my ideal day. And uh, it's not necessarily that I'm going to kind of like visualize this perfect day and then try and get to that day by the end of the year. But what it's meant to do is uh, it's meant to really highlight some of the values and some of the things that you might want to infuse into your days as a result of visualizing this perfect day. So how it works is I sit down and I start to visualize or think about my perfect day. If there was no restrictions, if I could live any day that I wanted, what would that day look like? Like, when would I wake up? Uh, who would I be doing it with? Uh, what would I be doing? You know, I, I start to think about like each part of the day. So you wake up, you know, what would you have a breakfast? Uh, and then what would you do after breakfast? And then uh, how would you spend your mornings? And what would you have for lunch? And, you know, you go through the day and you just start to kind of name things. Where would you be living? Um, all of these kinds of things. And so I just start to really write all of that down. And so that really helps me just to say, okay, what's important to me? Um, you know, and I might not be able to live my perfect day every day, but how could I take some of those things and embed them into my days throughout the year? And so when I've done both of those two, I do the final activity, which is choose some focus areas. So once I've done my more or less list, once I've done my visualization activity, then I kind of choose a few areas um, that can guide me in my goals, my practices, what I consume in the year, what I write about, all of those kinds of things. Um, I try and choose 
between three to five, um, no more than five, absolutely, but usually it's about three things that I want to focus on in the year and they really become a lens for everything else that I do next as part of my yearly review. So once I've done those activities, then I start to get into the actual planning. And the first thing I do is I choose a word of the year. I've been doing this for about six or seven years. I've had some great words over that time. Um, I've had words like Kazen, which means continuous improvement, magic. Last year, my, year was pr uh, my word was pro. Uh, I've had other words like push and play. Um, and, uh, and so basically it's a word that you can choose as a theme for your year. So if you look back at the more or the less list, you looked back at your visualization and your kind of focus areas, is there a word that kind of sums up everything? And sometimes it takes some time for me just to kind of like let this sit. I'm usually thinking about my word from about September, October. Um, I'm thinking about the year ahead. I'm thinking about, okay, what happened this year? And so sometimes that word just kind of like drops in with me and that's what um, usually happens. Sometimes it's like right to the end and I'm still thinking, what is this word? So it is something that's that's really kind of personal to you about how you find it. But most of the time you'll know kind of how you want to theme your year. Um, and so you choose that word and you kind of put that um, as kind of the umbrella in which we're gonna view our whole year. The second thing that I do is I choose a mantra. This is very new. I only just started this last year, um, but basically it's kind of from that theme. Um, usually there's kind of a, um, a, a little sentence um, or something that means something to me that I can use um, kind of to look at daily and to kind of frame my days and say, am I living in the way that I want to live? And so um, last year, because my year was pro, I actually took a phrase from the book Turning Pro by Stephen Pressfield, um, which is what inspired my, uh, my actual word. And that mantra helped me to kind of really focus every day, which was what we get when we turn pro is we find our power. We find our will and our voice and we find our self-respect. We become who we always were, but had until then been afraid to embrace and to live out. And so that really helped me kind of frame my days. This year, um, I'm going into the year with a phrase that is your days are your art. And it's just a really simple phrase where I can say, am I living out every day like it's my art, like I'm creating it every single day? Okay, and your mantra can come from anywhere. It can come from, uh, sometimes I scroll through Pinterest. And so you can kind of um, choose your mantra kind of from any place, but it should be something that really inspires you. Okay, so the next thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is set some goals. Um, of course, we're talking about yearly planning. Now, I have had a love-hate relationship with goals. I um, don't love the idea of saying, well, I want to uh, you know, get to this much revenue or to grow by this much. I, I'm very much, uh, I don't do outcome-based goals very well, um, only because I feel like, well, uh, what if I don't reach that? And then I don't celebrate all like all the progress that I did make. Or what if I do reach it and then I'm kind of like, oh, well, I'm done. <laughs> and so what I instead like to do is kind of choose value based goals. Like who do I want to be and who am I becoming um, and kind of work towards that rather than outcome based goals. But you can do goals however you like. All I would say is that I tend to hold goals fairly loosely. So once you've chosen your goals, then you want to choose some practices to go along with them. So um, goals don't just happen. Obviously we have to take action for in order to, to reach those goals. And so what I do is I choose some practices that relate to those goals that I know. If I did that practice every day, that the goal would just happen automatically. And that's really how I think about goals and practices in that if you choose a goal, you should choose a daily practice that you can do um, that is in your control, that you can tick off every day, and that will get you towards um, that goal easily. Okay, um, and some goals are going to be harder than others and some days it's going to be harder to live out those practices. But if you're doing your practice every day, you should be able to get to your goals.
All right, and so once you have done your word of the year, your mantra, your goals, and your practices, then it's time to get a little creative, okay? So all of this is really great. It looks beautiful in your Tana template, but what I like to do is kind of visualize it. And so I create a vision board for my year. Usually I do this and either Canva or Procreate, depending on how creative I am feeling. Um, and uh, I basically take all of this, everything that I've kind of planned, and this usually takes me a, about an hour. Sometimes I'll leave it and I'll come back, I'll let it kind of marinate and percolate in my head. Um, but I basically take everything, my visualization, my more or less list, my goals, my mantra, my word, and I start to look for images that represent all of that. And I kind of build a vision board, which is kind of like a whole bunch of photos with my word of the year in the middle um, that I can uh, use. I usually, I, I put it in my Tana template as well as putting it uh, on my desktop, on my iPad. And so everywhere I look, usually, you know, throughout my days and, and throughout the year, I see my vision board kind of everywhere that I look. Um, and, uh, and so it's a really nice representation for, um, uh, for, for where I wanna go and just a reminder. And so once I've locked all of that in, then I simply pin that yearly plan into my Tana sidebar. And so it's kind of always there and I can kind of click on it and review it and see how I'm going. That's, that's pretty much it. There's not really tracking. Uh, there's nothing like that. It's just something to focus me and to bring intention to how I live my days within that year. So the only thing uh, that I do specifically is when I'm doing my monthly planning, which is when I'm doing my monthly planning, um, that I just do a quick recap of how I'm going with my yearly review. Am I living out the goals and the practices that I said? Am I in line with my theme um, and my word? And uh, do I need to kind of make any adjustments and, and that kind of thing? So it's a really nice, uh, I find gentle practice. It's not, uh, doesn't, it doesn't fill me with anxiety. I'm not thinking, oh, I haven't reached my goals. It's just a way to check in with myself that I'm living the way that I intended and that I put intention towards uh, when I, I created the plan at the beginning of the year. So I hope you liked this video on how I do my yearly planning and it inspired you uh, to maybe um, do something similar. Um, if you liked this video, please make sure that you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because I create videos like this regularly. And I would love to hear how you do your yearly planning or your year review. So leave a comment below and let me know that. And if you have any questions, then please reach out. I would love to talk to you about them. 